Hi everyone, my name is Darren. For those of you who are new to the channel, I am a recent Year 12 graduate from Scotch College based in Melbourne, Australia. And starting in March of this year, I will be studying medicine at Monash University. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about the UCAT. For Year 12 students who want to study medicine, and in particular undergraduate medicine at Monash, the three main hurdles that you have to pass are 1. The ATAR, 2. The UCAT, and 3. The Interview. For me, most of my school life had been geared towards ATAR, because that's what I heard a lot of the older kids stressing and talking about. But once I hit year 11, year 12, I realised that for me to study medicine, the UCAT would be just as important. Because at Monash, your ATAR, your UCAT, your interview are all considered equally. So I sat my UCAT in 2020, and usually students sit it in the month of July. I scored quite decently, uh, I scored in the 95th percentile, and I'll put my scores up on the screen right now. So today's video will be in three parts. One, I'll talk about what is the UCAT and go into each of the five sections. Two, I'll give some general strategies on how to prepare in the coming weeks. And three, I'll share some insight into how I picked when and where I would actually sit the exam, because that is actually quite an important consideration to make as well. So please enjoy the video. So what is the UCAT? If you'd like to know about specific questions, you can hop onto the Pearson website and Pearson is the official company for the UCAT and you can see the different types of questions in each section. For today, I'll be giving you a breakdown of the five main sections of the UCAT. So the first section is verbal reasoning. It's sort of like reading comprehension. A lot of the questions will ask you whether a piece of information is true, false, or can't tell, and will also ask you questions about specific parts of the text. The second section is decision-making. It's kind of a weird section. A lot of the questions ask you about logic puzzles, logic games, and Venn diagramming kind of questions. The third section is quantitative reasoning. This was my best section on the day. Uh, it's pretty standard maths. As long as your foundations are good and you know how to use the UCAT calculator, you'll be good for this section. The second last section is abstract reasoning. This is the most fast paced section with the most questions. There's a lot of which shapes belong to which patterns, identifying patterns and completing patterns. The final section is situational judgment. This doesn't actually contribute to your overall score and your percentile. It stands by itself and different unis use it differently. It presents you with a lot of moral situations and asks you which actions are appropriate and which considerations are important. So now let's have a look at how many questions and how much time you get for each of the sections and also how much time you get per question within the section. For verbal reasoning, you have 44 questions in total. You have 21 minutes to complete the section, and that means 28 and a half seconds per question. Decision making is a bit more relaxed. You have 29 questions total and 31 minutes to complete them, and that means 64 seconds per question. For quantitative reasoning, you have 36 questions and 24 minutes to complete all of them, and that comes down to 40 seconds per question. Abstract reasoning is really quick. You have 69 questions total, 26 minutes for the entire section, and that only comes down to a mere 22 and a half seconds per question. For situational judgment, time is not really a factor. Just take your time and try and get the correct answers. Um, you get quite a lot of time for that section. So with regards to general preparation, one thing I did which really helped and really laid the foundations for the rest of the year, and which I recommend you guys do as well, is to do an exam a week. Uh, so this is a full mock exam, all two hours of it. Now I set my exam on the weekends because I found that this was the best time for me to block out two hours and really focus on the exam and also have some time later to look over my mistakes and look over the explanations as well. So it's still early days now. I don't recommend getting too bogged down in the percentiles and the scores you get, but there are three main things that I really encourage you to work on. One is to get a feel of the exam. Now the UCAT is incredibly different to any exam I've ever sat and as you can see from the mark and the time breakdown, it is incredibly fast paced. So I do encourage you to do that exam a week so you can gain a feel for the pace you need to maintain for each section and what speed you need to work out so that you can finish all the questions. Two, I recommend thinking of some initial strategies for each section and to try them out in each week's mock test uh, because this is a time to really be testing things out, finding out which ways work best for you. For example, for verbal reasoning, is reading the text first and then doing the questions better for you? Or do you find it much easier to read the question and then go searching in the text for the answer? So little things like that, um, just try it out each week and find what works best for you. And three, I really encourage you to try and identify your common mistakes. So in the UCAT, there are a lot of types of questions. 
Uh, and if you can under identify types that you struggle with, it's really easy to improve. So for example, for quantitative reasoning, do you struggle with reading graphs? Do you struggle with ratios or percentages? Identifying these theory or con concepts that you find difficult um, early on uh, means that you can improve upon it really quickly and will really improve your score later in the year as well. So for me, I could kind of get a gist of the questions I was getting wrong um, each week after the mock test when I would go through the answers. Um, but if you find it difficult and you really want a clear list of what you don't know, then I encourage you to either write them out or to just screenshot them and keep them in a file on your phone. As with subtest mocks, so that's mocks for each section, I didn't do them this early on last year because at that point I hadn't really identified which sections I was weak at. I was still trying out different things. However, I do recommend you guys do the question banks and the various questions in there. Um, this is especially important now, doing those questions and doing the mock tests on the weekend because at this point in time, um, the sacks aren't that heavy hitting yet. Um, they're not weighted that heavily. A lot of the bigger sacks, you know, the 60 mark English comparative comes later in the year. And also a lot of the sacks are much more spread out in term one as well. Um, in term two, three, they become really bunched up sometimes, you know, consecutive sack days. But in term one, they're usually quite spread out. They're worth a bit less. So I encourage you to capitalize on this time and do question banks and do uh, two hour mock tests. So when deciding the date and location for your UCAT test, I think there are two main considerations to make. Uh, one for me was I really wanted to see my UCAT early on in the, uh, in the July holidays. So the UCAT testing period is usually between term two and term three in that two to three week holiday. For me, I wanted to get it done early. I felt that delaying it, that little bit of extra revision I could get wouldn't be worth it. I just really wanted to get my 90th percentile and then focus on my three fours um, for my ATAR. So it's just a consideration for you to think about whether you think that extra time is helpful, um, how, much, how much emphasis you're placing on ATAR and UCAT. So these are things for you to weigh up before you make your decision. As with the location, I set my UCAT in Fitzroy. It was a really good location. There were not that many people at all. I was actually in a room by myself and I found that really calming and really helpful for me. Some of the other locations that I heard from my friends, like the city, you'd be in rooms with four or five other people. If you don't like hearing you know, the tapping of computers or you don't like that pressure of having other people around you, then I'd opt for you know, less popular locations. So that's another consideration, uh, what type of environment you like, and of course, you know, what's closer to you as well. So those are the two main considerations. One, time. How much time, how much extra time do you need to prepare for the UCAT? Um, how much of your holidays would you like to devote to your three fours, to the upcoming SACs and to the exams at the end of the year? And two, where, you know, what atmosphere do you work best in? And those two are definitely the two biggest considerations when deciding when and where you should see your UCAT. So that's it for a general overview of the UCAT, what it is, what are some general strategies you can implement in the coming weeks, and considerations for when and where you should sit the exam. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. I'll be making a video with specific strategies on specific sections later on, so stay tuned and I hope you guys have a nice day.